I'm in the city, we bringing it home, you know what I said, eh? Two up, two down, yeah, that's the state, but I'm from the town, eh? You can't it's your realtor's favorite realtor. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another episode of Real Estate. It's your boy Dean, back with another video. If you could, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Please leave a comment, share it with your friends. Help me help y'all. As y'all can tell by the title, this is a different type of video. As y'all can see, I parked the car for this one. This is one that's a little bit closer to my heart. So, a lot of people always hit me and say, Dean, you know, you're doing your thing out here. Um, you're grinding. I see it all the time. I see you on the Facebook. I see your YouTube videos. And typically, all people see is, you know, they see the accomplishments. They see the the 25 plus houses I've sold this year. They see the 50, 60 plus families that have signed up for sold this year. They see the they see the news articles on stuff I've done in the community. They've they see all that. You know what I'm saying? They like, yo, like he out here grinding. But honestly, that's just stuff I do that I think I'm just honestly capable of doing. I just kind of think I'm wired that way. Now for that to make sense you got to understand where I come from, my story. Like, I get up here and, you know, I play and laugh and joke. I drop funny stories from time to time. But in a serious sense, this is the best story I can give y'all. I can give y'all my story. Now, mind you, I'm not going to be able to sit up here and explain every day of my life for the last 31 years. But, I mean, I've grinded a lot. You know, I've done a lot for myself to get me to this point. But I've also identified that, you know, it's been certain times in my life where it's been a few people who've done, you know what I'm saying, done stuff for me or or put me in a position for me to, you know, maximize my potential and I want to give thanks to them. So my next couple videos, I'm kind of devoted to them and I'm going to give y'all my story, bro. So y'all know how I came up for real, for real. Let's get into it. 1990, New York, Brooklyn. I'm born. All right. So... Essentially, I'm born in St. John's Hospital in Brooklyn, New York. I get out of the womb. My mom's 25. My dad's 23. They they dating. They not married. I'm born. I'm here. All right. So my moms and my pops are both immigrants from a small island called Dominica. It's in the West Indies. It's not Dominican Republic. Please do not confuse it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. You got Google. So. As I'm growing up, I mean, I'm in a family, you know what I'm saying? My dad's the primary source of income. My mom's really not working. My mom's more of a, a nurturing mother. You know, she's home with me during the during the most long parts of the day. Um, she does have some part-time jobs, but, you know, my span in New York, I moved out of New York when I was five. So, I don't remember too much about New York. Now, it is some things I do remember. I do remember living on Winthrop Street in New York. I remember my family, um, specifically my I had my auntie Indy, you know, my auntie Eva, my cousins Dwight, now, my uncle Lance, my uncle Lloyd, Miss Aldona, my mom's best friend, her son Quan, who Quan's basically like my cousin, like he was the closest person in age to me at that point in time. So island families, my, my parents are still young, so they still doing the whole basement parties, like back alley parties with loud music playing like that that was my lifestyle growing up like i was always the little kid at these parties kwan would always be there so i'm always with kwan like that was my upbringing you know now my parents weren't wealthy you know my dad was a plasterer so he does drywall work so my dad was a hard worker you know he'd leave the house come back home eight hours later covered in plaster that was how I saw my dad, you know. We also live with my uncle Hunt and my godfather, um, who I refer to as my uncle Maxon. So we, we we all lived in one apartment, but I was the youngest one there. Um, I think the story goes not too long after my fifth birthday. We were come. I think my mom said we were coming home, and it was two people sitting in the in the in the lobby of the apartment building. We lived on the third floor. It was a three story building. We lived on the third floor. And we walk right past them like everything was cool. And we get upstairs and boom, gun go off. Essentially, drug deal downstairs went bad. My dad came home from work. My mom told him what happened. My mom basically was like, you know, we got to get out of here. You know, this ain't really what she's trying to be. So I had an uncle, Uncle DeLon, who was stationed at, I believe, in Little Creek in Virginia. So one... 
I, I can't remember when it was. I do remember going to Disney World as a kid and my my cousin Delston picked me up because I was like I was like four. And he took he he I rode I flew with him to Disney World. During that time, my mom and dad came down to Virginia to visit my uncle and they kind of liked the area. So one of my last memories in New York was I remember the U-Haul truck being in front of the building. I remember us loading up the U-Haul truck to move to to move to Virginia. So I do remember moving to Virginia. I get to Virginia in December of 95, right before Christmas. And I move into the neighborhood that I grew up in called Camelot, which is in Chesapeake. All right. So I get to Camelot. You know, I'm used to seeing a city setting and I see the suburbs. I mean, you got shorter houses, houses a little bit spaced apart. You know what I'm saying? You got actual street sidewalks. Now, Camelot, if you was to ask somebody from Chesapeake about Camelot, a majority of the people are going to classify it the same way I do. You know, Camelot is a pretty large neighborhood. I think, honestly, it's got to be close to like 500, 500 single family homes in Camelot. In comparison to some of the other neighborhoods in the city, it's, a, it's, it's not the projects. It's not. But it's a lower income neighborhood. It's predominantly black. And a lot of people like to correlate that with bad. And it's not that's not true. Camelot is a real good neighborhood. It's some real good people out there. People just always want to assume stuff when they see a bunch of us. But I will tell you this. Whatever you're looking for out there, you'll find it. Whatever time you on, I guarantee you it's somebody else out there on that same time. That's the easiest way I can explain. I start going to school, Camelot Elementary, when I'm five and I start making friends in the neighborhood. Some of my first friends is, you know, you got Caleb, you got Twan, you got Kadeem, Isaiah. Um, I mean, it's a lot to name, but I start making friends that I keep for the rest of my life. <clears throat> now, mind you, I'm going to school, and whenever you in a neighborhood, everybody has a reputation. Everybody has something that they're known for. To keep it short and sweet, I was the kid with the island parents, so I was walking around the neighborhood with sandals on. I was the kid, I was really smart. I was really smart. I was kind of self-proclaimed one of the smartest people in my in my grade. And I was outside playing with my friends and my mom was pretty strict. Like, couldn't just after school just go outside. For, for my mom, essentially it was, all right, during the weekdays, you at home doing homework. You go outside on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays. That's it. Got nothing to lie about. When the street lights, you know what I'm saying, turn on, you back in the crib. Now, like I said, Camelot was a big neighborhood, but it was also known that, you know, some places in Camelot tended to attract, you know what I'm saying, a bad crowd. So in my house, it was basically like a three block radius where my mom was like, yo, you stay in this three block radius. Like, I don't ever want you outside of this radius. But like I said, I start meeting some more friends, Earl. It's a, it's a lot of people I meet during this time. And on, on my particular street, we always play basketball and football. So I was outside with other friends who were kids just like me growing up. So elementary school is very simple. You know, it's typically I go to school, I get good grades. I, I kind of am known to get good grades. Graduate elementary school. Now, in middle school, during that time, my, my life changes a little bit. Like, of course, back at elementary school, my sister was born, so now I'm a big brother. But my dad was a plasterer, and he felt he wasn't getting paid as much as he should for his work. Now, between Virginia and, and New York, there's two different types of areas, or two different levels of money you can make. So in middle school, my dad basically starts commuting to work. So even though we live in Virginia, he gets a job in New York and he starts going to New York to work for like two weeks. Like he got a room up there and then come back home because he's trying to provide for the family. So during this time, I mean, I'm home. I'm not, a, I'm not even an adult. I'm not even a teenager yet, but I'm starting to kind of grow into my own a little bit because my dad's not as home like he used to. I'm talking to my dad on the phone every night. He's coming back home every two weeks, but my mom is i'm also watching my mom grow up so my mom learned how to drive not too long before this like i remember growing up watching my mom sitting on the edge of the bed with a popcorn bowl imagine that she was driving i think my mom got her license probably when she was like 
I don't know, probably like in her low 30s. And on top of that, my mom, she, she, after when my sister started going to school, before that, my mom would stay home, you know? But when my sister started going to school, my mom was like, yo, she want to kind of do something with her life. So my mom decided to go to community college. I remember helping my mom study for her tests at community college. Like, that's that's something I did that not a lot of other people can say that they did. Like, I remember helping my mom with her math courses. I was really, really talented in math. I also went to, you know, gifted and talented education as a as a youth in elementary school. And all that, all that stuff with being so-called smart, I kind of did all that. Middle school starts. Small kid up until middle school. I really, you know, I, I, I won't say I was hurting, you know what I'm saying? Everything I wanted, I had, but, you know, clothes really wasn't important to me. Like, I wasn't really trying to impress nobody. I was just, you know, as long as my, my friends had my back, you know, I was happy. Like, I wasn't thinking about, you know, females or nothing. I was just going to school. I wasn't even brushing my hair at this point. Like, And middle school, like I said, my dad starts working out of state. He starts being able to provide a little bit more for us, you know? So, like, I don't get my first pair of, like, name brand sneakers until until seventh grade um and i actually remember the pair it was some some grand white on um, mid air forces i didn't even know how to dress bro i remember first day of school i did not match bro i had clean shoes though but i didn't match at all but i was just happy that was my first pair of like name brand shoes you know what i'm saying this is somebody i'm accustomed to getting joked on because i didn't have what people wanted you to have but that's kind of why i learned how to joke too because when you when you getting joked on you better learn how to joke back or you just going or you just gonna have to eat that so, mind you, I my life at that point is is Camelot, the bubble. Like, my mom knows I go to school, but after that, like, it's no, like, she's not really super involved with the school. So, everything I learn is basically in my hood. Like, so I learn how to play basketball. I learn how to play football on my own with my friends. Now... I had played rec football at elementary school, did that one time just to be included because my mom was like, hey, you should do this. But I didn't know how it works when you get to middle school. So seventh grade, <clears throat> my mom not really being involved with the school. I missed tryouts for football in seventh grade. Now, I made it upon myself. I took it upon myself that in eighth grade, I know like tryouts are always the first day of school after school. So I make it to tryouts um, in eighth grade and... I made the team. True, I was a little chubby back then. I played. I started actually at right guard and defensive end. Right guard and defensive end. So, also during this time, in sixth grade, this is my first time going to school with kids outside of my neighborhood. So, that's kind of a eye-opener for me. But in sixth grade, I actually started advanced math in sixth grade. That's because of my, my history. So I started pre-algebra in sixth grade, um, algebra one in seventh grade, and geometry in eighth grade. So I'm a little bit advanced, and we get to high school. Now, high school comes. I just played football in eighth grade. Like I said, my mom not really being involved. Me spending the summers out in the neighborhood because, I mean, like I said, Camelot is my bubble. I got no reason to go anywhere else during this time. School starts. I want to play football my freshman year. And down there, it's, it's, it's a team already. I didn't know that they had football conditioning over the summer. Like I said, I didn't know people from other schools. All I know is my my little, my little homies around the way, and that's that's about it. So I missed football my freshman year, but like I said, Sophomore year, real big. So, actually, let me take a step back. So, my freshman year, my freshman year is coming to the end of the year, and we all, my bus stop is on the corner of my of my of my street. So, one particular day, everybody who goes to the bus stop always at the bus stop. Typical bus stop conversation, and it's this new dude at the bus stop. I lie to you now. He got on, he got on some red dicky pants, some red and white. Air Forces, uh, a white tee, and a black hoodie with the sheepskin in it. And he got this real nappy fro, right? And me, you know, I kind of get this from my mom. I'm always, I'm quick to make a friend. So I'm like, hey, yo, like, you, 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 like, you going to our school? And he like, yeah. So, yo, I'm Dean. You know what I'm saying? He like, yo, my name L, Elroy. So L, L just moved to the neighborhood. His house was down the street from my from my house. Like I could see Elroy's house from my house. 
I get outside, say, yo, like he could, he could hear me from down the street. So from that point on, like, I'm like, yo, you know, I could kind of show you where you need to be going. He like, all right, bet. So me and L, we get tight. Like, that's the homie, 100 grand. So L kind of gets, L becomes a part of the street family. Like, everybody who played football, basketball, L out there with us, it's at the point, like, L know my mama. I know his mama. I know his family. L coming in my crib, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to L crib. We tight. That's my brother, you know what I'm saying? So me and L were like, yo, Hey, you trying to play football next year? That was like, sure. So sophomore year, me and L both make the team. We both actually start. I start at tight end. L start at defensive end. Football's cool. Of course, like I said, we kids, bro. We talk about typical kid stuff. I mean, football, damn, all types of sports, playing video games, you know what I'm saying, music. Damn, we both, you know what I'm saying, talking to females, you know what I'm saying? We, 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 we boys, you know what I'm saying? Football's over. Now... In every neighborhood, it gets to a point where you don't realize that this might be your last time playing outside. Like, we all growing up. Like, as, when we was kids, we had nothing to do, so we played outside all the time. But when you when you get older, you stop playing outside as, as often. Now, the way my life was set up, bro, my only job, for real, for real, was to go to school. Like, I had nothing else to do. Like, my mom was like, you don't need to be worrying about no job. Just go to school, get good grades. That's it. And I had, I had good grades. So, one Saturday, I hit L up. I'm like, bro, you trying to go outside? He was like, nah, bro, I got a job. So, I'm like, damn, cool. So, I mean, I'm outside, or I'm at the crib playing the game, doing something that's not really productive, but it's a weekend. Like, it ain't bothering nobody. Next weekend come, L was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I can't come out this weekend. I got a job. So, one particular day, we link up. It's like a Sunday. And L pulls out this big wad of cash. Just a whole bunch of ones. And I'm like, damn, bro, where you get all this money from? He's like, yeah, I work, bro. I'm like, what you do? He said, bro, I, I bag groceries on base. So he worked at the commissary. The commissary essentially is the grocery store for the military. So L dad is retired Navy. I think he was still in back then, but he's retired Navy now. My mom and dad never served in the forces. So I had no reason to ever be on a military base. No reason that whatsoever. Like I said, you know, when you becoming like 16, 17, money ain't important, but money's a cool thing to have, bro. Like, you don't need a lot of money, but I mean, I'm at this point, I'm still getting lunch money from my mom to buy food in school. Like, I want to be able to buy my own snacks or buy clothes that I want to buy. I'm living off my parents. I'm still a full-fledged kid at this point. I ain't got no money. All my, everything I got is coming straight from my parents. So, like, hey, bro, hey, you think you can get me a job, bro? It'll be my, my, my homie. They'll say, bro, you know, I don't know, but I ask. So the next Saturday, I guess L asked his mom, yo, can, can I, you know what I'm saying, take Dean up here to see if he can get a job? It was like, bro, if you talk to the, the lady on the register, it was the head bagger. If you talk to her, Miss Janet, she might be able to get you a job. So I'm, I'm hyped, you know, so I'm like, bro, I'm about to go over here and get this job. L getting money. I'm about to get this money, too. And... That particular Saturday, I go up there, and it's a whole bunch of other baggers. You know what I'm saying? And Elle was like, hey, Miss Janet, this is Dean. This is my buddy. I told you, you um, he was interested in getting a job. So Miss Janet looks at me, and she's like, you know, I'm sorry, but you can see it's a, it's a lot of other baggers. Like, we don't have space for nobody. Like, it's a lot of other people here. So, you know, I take it with a grain of salt, take it on the chin. I'm like, well, we tried. L stay, continue working. His mom take me home. This was Saturday. Now... Sunday comes, I'm chilling, watching the games. Like, it's, it's, it's football Sunday. You know what I'm saying? I'm watching the games. I get a call from L, probably about, like, 1.30. L, like, A.O. Dean. I'm like, what's up, bro? He said, hey, um, dog, it's, like, real busy up here, bro, and a lot of baggers ain't short to work because it's, it's a fully, full-fledged volunteer job. Like, essentially, you don't get paid by the store. You show up, you bag groceries, pay for a plastic, and the customers tip you as they please. It's all tips. So that's why he had a whole bunch of ones. He said, bro, Miss Janet was like, hey, your friend that came up here said I want a job. If he can get up here in 30 minutes, I'll give him a job. Now, that day, when I sit back and look on it, that day is a key moment in my life. When he said that, he said, yo, if you can get up here in 30 minutes, should give you a job. I could have did a lot of different things, bro. I could have said, 
man, she ain't hiring me yesterday. Fuck that. I could have did that. Or I could have said, nah, bro, I'm, I'm good. Like, I'm straight, but don't even worry about it. I could have did that. But I said, you know what I'm saying? I'm sitting here watching the game. L getting money. I ain't got no money. I want money. I should go work for my money. And I say, hey, bro, you think your mom could take me on base? Because my mom couldn't take me. I had no no way to get on base. He said, yeah, bro, just walk to my house. Tell my mom what happened. She'll, she'll pick you up. I'll call her. I said, all right. I get up. I put clothes on, a white T-shirt on. I walk to everyone mama house down the street. I say, Ms., you know what I'm saying? I say, hey, Miss Brown, like, can you get me right up here? I think everyone got me a job. So she she get in the car. She get in the car, bro. She take me up there. I'm up there in like 15 minutes. And I get on. And I walk in. I see Miss Janice. She said, whew, you made it. We need help. Go ahead. Just get online and just start bagging. So L with me. He she like, yo, bro, when they come, you ask paper or plastic. If they want plastic, you put it in plastic. If you want paper, put it in the paper. You follow the cars out. And they're not, they don't, they're not obligated to give you nothing. But if you do everything they do, you know what I'm saying, they'll pay you. So cool. So I'm bagging groceries, taking it to the cart, taking the carts out. You know what I'm saying? And that day, bro, I lied to you not. That day, I made my first, I made my first thirty dollars ever in my life, ever. Like the first, aside from money given to me by my parents, I made the first legit thirty dollars in my life, bro. I'll never forget it. And Miss Janet was like, "All right, well, you go to school, right?" I'm like, "Yeah, you know, I go to school." She said, "Well, I see you here on the weekends. See you next week." And I get my first job. Now, some people look at it as though, I, right, you got a job. But this is the job that set the foundation for my grind. This is the job that showed me the harder I work, the more money I can make. Also, this is the job where I end up meeting the woman that becomes my wife and the mother of my three kids. So that plays a very, very pivotal role in my story. You know what I'm saying? But honestly, you know, I've done a lot of stuff myself, but no matter what, L, bro, Elroy Brown, dog, no matter what, bro, anything you need, bro, eternally grateful, bro, because you put me in position to be better. Even though it was a small thing that you did, bro, it was huge to me. Huge. And L, know he my guy. 100 grand, you know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't talk every day like we used to because, I mean, we, we older, we got different obligations, but they'll know if I call him or they'll know if he called me, you know, I'm picking up the phone. If I call him, I know he's picking up the phone. I mean, we done done so much stuff together. You can ask anybody that went to Creek my year. Me and Elroy was tag team champions. Like, no matter what, we was always together. And then, you know what I'm saying? We we, we still boys. We still boys. That, that's That's never in question. We still boys. And if we need each other, we got each other. And that, that ain't going to never end. There's been times, you know, L done, there's been times where I done call L and L, before I got off the phone, L was already in the car. And there's been times where L done called me. Whew, I can think of a lot of situations. L done called me in a bind, and I'm, I'm the first one to pull up. I'm the first one to pull up. This some stuff I'm not even going to talk about on camera. It's some stuff that, that we done been through, man. But love you, bro. You know that. That's part one of my story. L put me on. L got me the job. Y'all stay tuned for the next part. Go on.